Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got this Bandix Glide Slope Receiver to take apart. First, before we get into this teardown, let's take a moment to try to understand how Glide Slope works. Glide Slope is part of the instrument landing system. The Glide Slope antenna at the base of the runway provides two directional signals. The upper signal is 90 Hz and the lower signal is 150 Hz. For a proper three degree approach, the aircraft must fly at the intersection of the two signals. The aircraft's receiver measures the amplitude of these two signals and shows the pilots how far above or below they are from the glide slope. These two signals use a carrier frequency around 330 MHz and are AM modulated. So, this receiver must contain the necessary filters, mixers, oscillators, synthesizers, and signal dividers for processing these signals. Alright, here's the front of the receiver. This one is model GSA-25B. This unit is 4.7 pounds, and it's made by the Bandex Corporation, which is based in Baltimore, Maryland. We have a handle here and a clip for mounting it into the avionics rack. On the top here, we have a little metal plate for options. Here's the back of the unit. We have a modifications plate here. Looks like we have three modifications. And here's our connector. You can see we have, it looks like one RF, Connector here is populated while the other isn't. To remove this back cover, we will take out this screw and see what's underneath. Here's the cover. As you can see, it's made out of thin sheet aluminum. Here's what we have on the inside. And here's the other side. On the top here, we have a, another modifications label. And we have a sticker here that says modification by blueprint on December 29th, 1969. This unit in particular has a very strong smell of vintage electronics and you will know what I'm talking about if you've ever taken stuff apart like this. Alright, let's take a closer look at the left side over here. You can see we have the back side of the connector here and we have some wiring here. This is using Teflon wire and some cable lacing. You can see it extends up here and down here as well. Back behind here we have a Looks like a transistor. We have a power transistor here. And we have some capacitors. We also have this little sticker over here which says this device meets the 15 FCC rules. Alright, moving on. It looks like we have some screws here for adjustable components that are on the other side. We have a few test points here. These also look like adjustments that can be made. We have two transistors here made by Motorola and we have some connections going to the other side. Over here we have a circuit board which looks like it was traced out by hand. You can see it's on this hinge so let's take out those screws and see what's on the other side. Alright here's the other side of the board. You can see we have some more wiring which has been laced up by hand. We have some trimmable potentiometers here made by Alan Bradley. Each one here has got its own label. You can see we have one here that's not populated and another here which is not populated. Uh, this one is populated though. We have some transistors made by Motorola. We have some nice glass bodied components here. We have some larger glass body power resistors. You can also see these screws here have these little Teflon rings around them so they stay in place. It's always nice so you don't lose screws. Just like all the other screws on this unit, these have these little Teflon rings around them so the screws don't get lost. That's always a very nice detail. Here's what's behind the board. It looks like we have a whole bunch of uh, adjustments here for what I believe are more adjustable potentiometers. We have some test points and some transistors. Looks like everything here is labeled. These probably correspond to uh, some parameter that can be adjusted. You can see some connections going to this black box here, which we will take a closer look at later. It looks like we have a tiny little capacitor that is underneath that wiring there. It looks like it connects to this lower pin here. And maybe two little resistors there too back behind that wiring. All right, here's the other side, starting at the back. You can see the RF wire here. 
This is the antenna wire, which would go to the antenna on the exterior of the aircraft, which would pick up the, the glide slope signals. You can see it is grounded to the metal chassis here. On the connector here, you can see this one here is the only RF connector here that's populated. It's got metal on the outside and the inside. And it looks like it is got a either a plastic or a Teflon sleeve inside. All right, so it looks like we have a inductor here. We have a high power diode. This one is nicely gold plated. We have a power resistor for one watt and another resistor up here. We have some smaller resistors. Um, this component here, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Looks like we have a diode back there and the socket for the transistor, which is on the other side of this. Moving on, we have this circuit board here. This one's a little bit different in terms of construction than the other one, but it looks like we got two screws to take out and we can take a look at the other side. All right, here's the other side of the board. You can see this one is very parallel in nature. This must be for the uh, signal channeling or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. You can see we have a big line of crystal oscillators here and two lines of resistors back behind it. We have some different components on the outer edges here and it looks like we have a RF wire coming in and an RF wire coming out. All right, here's what's behind it. You can see we have this strip of metal contacts here which are to ground the the oscillators here. We have two metal boxes here, which we're going to take the covers off of here shortly. All right, so here's what's inside that box. We have two separate chambers here. It looks like they have pretty similar components in them. My guess is that this is for filtering to filter out noise from the RF input from the antenna. You can see here we have some capacitors in here. We have it looks like two socketed components. Those are either op amps or a transistor. We have a trimmable inductor here and here as well. As you can see here, they've used an interesting solution instead of using a piece of coax. It looks like they have the, what would be the center conductor in the coax wire. It's just this loose piece of wire here. And the ground, which would be surrounding the center conductor is just this metal strap here which looks like it just connects to the uh, the metal here. All right, let's take this cover off this other module here. All right, to get to the screws in this box here, I had to remove this board. Now we can take off this silver plated cover here and it reveals a cavity of, it looks like inductors in here. That's pretty interesting. You can see that these are just wrapped up coils of wire in these cavities. So that means that these large screws back here are for adjusting these cavities here. Here's what's on the back side of that cover. We have these little bumps here which correspond with these coils here in this cavity. I'd like to clarify that this antenna wire here actually loops around and it enters this cavity block first. It exits the cavity block here and then it goes into this compartment here. All right, let's move on to this compartment here. First, I've got to take out these five screws and then we can see what's underneath. All right, so here's the other side. As you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in here. It looks like these Big components here are the other side of those adjustable potentiometers, the ones that can be adjusted with these nuts here. You can see we have a whole bunch of them back there. We also have a whole lot of other stuff going on in here. Looks like we have some resistors and capacitors in here. You can also see we have these nice, looks like glass body resistors. You can see the uh, little spool of wire in there. We have some crystal oscillators down here, some more capacitors. We also have the sockets here for the transistors that are on the other side, or possibly op amps. We have some down here too. 
As you can see, we have part of the aluminum frame separating these two portions of this assembly here. There's going to be a reason for that, but I'm not exactly sure why right now. Moving on, let's take a closer look at this transformer over here. I think I need to take off this, this piece here, and maybe we can take a closer look at that transformer. All right, so here's the front piece. This is a cast aluminum piece. You can see here this little mechanism here, which keeps the handle from swinging out when you don't want it to. It looks like we have three more screws to take out, and then maybe we can look at the transformer. Now that those screws are removed, I can pull out the transformer a little bit, but it doesn't want to come out all the way. You can see we have nine connections back here, so this transformer is going to have a lot of different coils in it. We have some components back here. This is actually encased in a piece of metal. It's very rigid and tough looking. It goes all the way around. I'm guessing that is to keep it from interfering with the rest of the circuitry in this device. But a significant portion of the weight of this device here is just this transformer. All right guys, so that's about all there is to this device. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.